Fauci, China, the media, and the lab leak theory cover up. Is it possible that the virus causing COVID-19 did not develop naturally in a wet market in Wuhan, as we've been told, but instead was created in the Wuhan Institute of Virology and escaped due to some sloppy techniques? Even the Biden administration is coming around to this possibility after new information was released this month. And more shockingly, the American National Institute of Health was funding the creation of super infectious coronaviruses. Dr. Anthony Fauci himself has admitted that he and his organization were the ones providing some of the funding. Those are questions that we need to talk about today and we're starting right now. Over 3 million have died of COVID-19 and over 170 million have been infected. Millions more have lost their jobs or their businesses and nearly everyone on the planet has had their lives disrupted. So if there is a chance that this virus was intentionally created and funded, I think everyone on earth deserves to know the answers to these questions. However, even if the virus wasn't created in a lab and it turns out to be naturally created, it is now obvious that a cover-up of some sort occurred to prevent the questions from even being considered. And that cover-up seems to involve the Chinese government, dozens of worldwide scientists, the media in the USA, and maybe Dr. Fauci himself. So why is this important? If it was an accidental escape, it impacts whether this type of research being done in China, which is called gain of function research, which is basically turning normal viruses into super viruses, should this be allowed in the future? This is especially true since the USA is now currently underway to fund 10 times as much of this new research of this type than they did before. If it's dangerous and actually caused the pandemic, we should stop that type of research right now. Plus, the handling of the pandemic was the major issue in the American election of 2020. What would have changed if the origin of the virus was better understood a year ago? Might the election's outcome have changed? Americans need to understand the political connections to this cover-up as well. And what about China? If they are responsible in part, will the world hold them accountable and how will they do it? What if the USA is partially responsible as well? What will be the impact of that? In this video story, there are potential bad guys, potential heroes. It's quite an account and it deserves telling. We are proud to have been part of that telling five months ago. We shared this video by the YouTube channel, The Lamp, a channel which already understood a lot of the facts about this case on the origin of COVID-19. A link to the lamp's video is down in the description. But not all the facts were known then. For that, the world needs to thank Dr. Nicholas Wade, a renowned writer for the magazines Nature, Science, and even the New York Times. It is safe to say Dr. Wade is one of the senior science writers in the nation, if not in the world. Which is why, up until Dr. Wade's article in the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists, also linked down in the description, every major media outlet considered the idea that COVID-19 was a lab-created virus to be a conspiracy theory. And with good reason, two major groups of scientists had published letters to that effect at the beginning of the pandemic. One was published in the British medical journal, The Lancet, and the other was published in the magazine, Nature Medicine. <laughs> what more prestigious magazines could you get? Quote, we stand together to strongly condemn conspiracy theories suggesting that COVID-19 does not have a natural origin. The letter in Lancet read, Quote, our analysis clearly show that SARS-CoV-2 is not a laboratory construct or a purposely manipulated virus, says the second letter. 
But there's a problem with both of those letters, as Dr. Wade points out. That is that the first letter had no evidence at all to support that position, and the evidence in the second letter was not good science. Wade calls these letters political in nature and not science. So why would dozens of respected scientists put their reputations on the line for something like that? Well, if it was a political ploy, it seems like it almost worked. We are now 15 months into the pandemic and a balanced look at the facts is just coming out. The second reason is that several of the scientists signing the letters had ulterior motives. If you viewed the video by the lamp, you know this man, Dr. Peter Daszak, the president of EcoHealth Alliance of New York. According to Wade, the NIH paid Daszak's organization to fund coronavirus research at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. He was a middleman. If the SARS-CoV-2 virus had escaped from the research that he funded, Daszak might have been considered responsible just like China. And now, just today, the NIH is admitting they did fund that research. And it turned out that this DASIC is the one who organized and drafted the first letter that we just talked about. Imagine that. This is a massive case of conflict of interest. Yet the letter to Lancet concluded, quote, we declare no competing interests, end of quote. <laughs> that obviously was untrue. Nicholas Wade brings out that this letter wasn't Dasik's only conflict of interest. He was also a prominent member of the WHO's team. He was also a prominent member of the World Health Organization's team of scientists that recently investigated whether the virus arose naturally from animals or in a lab. Was he the best expert to have on the team? What did he influence in the statement that they just made? And you may recognize him from TV. He was a frequent guest on a number of media news shows like CNN talking about the natural origin of the virus. <laughs> Isn't that convenient? But why would other major scientists have joined him in downplaying the lab leak theory? I mean, good science means looking at all options, acquiring the evidence, and then seeing what theory fits this evidence. But that is not what was done. All other theories other than the natural evolution theory were eliminated without looking at evidence. In terms of motive, we know that most of the scientists who signed the letters are doing the same type of research as the Wuhan Institute of Virology in China. And now the dollars for that type of research have escalated, like we said, 10 times greater than they ever were. These scientists were taking known animal viruses and altering them to make them transmissible and deadly to humans. If it turns out that SARS-CoV-2 was one of these experiments that escaped, the public outcry would probably stop all of that type of research. That doesn't mean that all of these doctors had the motive of preserving their jobs, but it's a pretty good motive for participating in a cover-up for some. And the NIH had a motive to keep something like this hidden. Not only might they have indirectly funded the research that led to the pandemic, but it might have been less than legal, as you're about to learn shortly. China, of course, had a sure motive to cover this up. Imagine the damages that the world may demand from them. Could the USA cancel all of its debt to China and nationalize all the Chinese holdings in the USA? <laughs> Imagine that, trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars. And that would only be the USA. And those in the media and politicians opposing the then president of the USA had motives to see him not reelected. So the idea of a lab leak or an intentional release was called a conspiracy theory until the hero of this story, Dr. Wade, was brave enough to publish his article two weeks ago. And in that article, Wade presents good science based on evidence. That's why 
the NIH, Dr. Fauci, and even the Biden administration are now coming around to the idea that somebody really needs to look at this theory. Dr. Wade first points out that in the first 15 months of the pandemic, there has been zero evidence for a natural animal to human transmission that Daszak and the other scientists supported. No animal vector has been found, even though with other similar viruses, the vectors were found almost immediately, like within a month or two. Second, when an animal virus jumps from an animal to a human, originally the virus is weak and it takes time to become stronger. This didn't happen with SARS-CoV-2. The virus was incredibly strong immediately, just as if it had been designed that way. So maybe it was. Third, the theory was that the virus arose in a live animal wet market. And there was a cluster of early cases around that market. However, since then, a number of even earlier cases that had nothing to do with the wet market have been found. The wet market was eliminated as a source. So there is zero evidence for the natural transmission theory. However, there is a lot of evidence for a lab created virus. Now this is circumstantial evidence at present. We need to state that clearly. It cannot yet be stated for sure that the lab created the virus because their records have been sealed by China. But it seems the lab could have done so easily. Quote, it is clear that the Wuhan Institute of Virology was systematically constructing novel chimeric coronaviruses and was assessing their ability to infect human cells and human ACE2 expressing mice, says Richard E. Bright, a molecular biologist at Rutgers University and a leading expert on biosafety. So with no access to the records, all we can do is look at the evidence we do have. First is that Dr. Daszak admitted that the Wuhan lab had created dozens of new coronaviruses to infect humans in an interview just one week before the first case. This interview was buried, but Dr. Wade discovered it. Dasik said the lab would take the old original SARS virus and put new spike proteins on it until they found one that was highly transmissible in humans. And this is exactly the type of thing Wade said the NIH and Dr. Fauci's branch of the NIH were funding. We could know if they created the SARS-CoV-2 virus for sure if we had those lab records, but China has sealed them, <laughs> which you know is suspicious in and of itself. If you have nothing to hide, why would you seal something? You would share those records to clear yourself. China is hiding something, and there is no doubt. The second piece of evidence is the lab had horribly sloppy technique that could have allowed a lab leak. The Wall Street Journal released a story about it back in 2008, and the U.S. State Department criticized them for this dangerous sloppiness in dealing with such dangerous viruses. Third, in November 2019, a month prior to the first official cases of COVID-19, three of the lab workers were hospitalized with COVID-like symptoms. However, the medical records and blood samples of these individuals have also been sealed by China. I mean, really? Again, why seal these records or deny access to interview these workers unless China has something to hide? The fourth piece of evidence is the virus arose in Wuhan, where the Viral Institute is. The bat viruses necessary for some type of natural transmission are found 750 miles away. Yet, no early cases of COVID were found near where the bats were or anywhere along the path. <laughs> it is the Wuhan virus. Fifth, there is what many scientists have called the smoking gun. It's something known as a furin cleavage site, which is a little bit complex, but let's try to simplify it. A furin cleavage site is a location on the viral spike protein that is necessary for the virus to seriously infect a human. Viruses having this site turn from normal virus into a super transmissible virus. And this furin cleavage site is not found in bat viruses. So how did it get onto the SARS-CoV-2 virus? The most logical explanation, according to Wade, is that it was added by scientists in one of these gain of function experiments. This evidence is so strong 
that Fauci and even the Biden administration are now slowly coming around to acknowledge what is obvious to others and has been for a long time. But this might be self-incriminating, you see. Between 2014 and 2017, the USA placed a hold on all gain-of-function research because it was so dangerous. So was the NIH's funding illegal back then during that time? Well, there was a footnote on page two of the law which gave a loophole if it was necessary to protect the public health or national security. Then you could fund that type of research. This means that either Fauci or the director of the NIH, Francis Collins, or maybe both, signed off on the exemption in order to keep funding the Wuhan's gain-of-function research. This is a line of questioning. Who signed it? Why did they sign it? That should be explored. Also, Dr. Wade didn't mention it, but that furin cleavage site, apparently added to this virus, brings up some very unsettling questions. The stated purpose of gain-of-function research is to create viruses before they might actually develop in the wild and then to create vaccines for them in advance to protect society. Obviously with SARS-CoV-2 that didn't work. But why did they add the furin cleavage site to the SARS-CoV-2 virus? A feature that has almost zero chance of developing naturally on its own from an animal virus. This obviously wouldn't have been in order to make a vaccine because you're making a vaccine for a virus that couldn't develop naturally. Why develop a virus then for reasons other than developing a vaccine? This channel would love to hear someone give an answer to that because it seems the only logical reason would be to develop a bioweapon. Was China doing this on their own? Or were the leaders of the NIH trying to develop a bioweapon? And if it was the leaders of the NIH, what would be the purpose of them developing a bioweapon? They aren't a military branch of the government. They're a healthcare branch of the government. This leads to all sorts of other questions. Was another group using the leaders of the NIH to develop the virus for them? Possibly Big Pharma desiring to sell vaccines or New World Order billionaires desiring a great reset of world economies or the government itself hoping to develop a vaccine passport to control its population. Now, we're really getting into some deep conspiracy theories there. But if there's one thing we've learned from this lab leak evidence is that we need to stop calling things conspiracy theories and ignoring them. Rather, we need to follow the evidence where it leads and only then decide whether a theory has validity. We're not saying those things have validity in this video. We are saying that we should follow up and find out where the evidence leads. This is a Christian prophecy channel. And you might ask, what does all this have to do with prophecy? Well, the answer is, if it's that easy for a lab to develop a virus, it would be easy for the coming Antichrist as well. And whoever the Antichrist is, he is likely alive on the earth right now. So he has seen the world's reaction to the pandemic and might be planning one of his own in the future. So click right here to discover how the Antichrist might turn such a future pandemic man-made pandemic into the mark of the beast and possibly take the technology developed by the new world order and use it for his own purposes. This is Nelson and I'll see you there.